In today's video, we're going to be talking about the medication lithium or lithium carbonate. And this video was actually requested by one of our channel members. So if you would like us to make a video specifically for you, consider being a channel member and requesting your video topic today. The link will be in the description. So let's start off with what is lithium? Well, lithium is actually a naturally occurring mineral that's found in water, soil, and certain foods like grains and vegetables. And it's widely used in medicine as a mood stabilizer, particularly for bipolar disorder. It's actually been labeled as the gold standard treatment for bipolar disorder. And its precise mechanism of action on how it actually helps to stabilize mood is not fully understood but it is believed to be involved in several key factors on cellular and molecular processes in the brain, such as neuroprotection. Lithium has been shown to enhance resilience of neurons by modulating the activity of neurotropic factors like brain-derived neurotropic factor or BDNF. And this actually helps to support the growth and survival of neurons, helping to protect the brain from damage associated with mood disorders. It also helps with signal modulation, and this may actually help to stabilize mood by regulating gene expression, synaptic plasticity, and neuronal energy metabolism. It can also help with neurotransmitter balance, as lithium helps to regulate the release and reuptake of key neurotransmitters, including serotonin, dopamine, and glutamate. And this balance is crucial for managing mood swings that are the key characteristics of bipolar disorder. Lithium is also involved with ion transport, in particular sodium and calcium transport in the neurons, which can also help normalize electrical signaling, which helps to reduce hyperactivity in certain brain regions or circuits. And so lithium's multifaceted mechanisms contribute to lithium's ability to help prevent mood episodes and protect against long-term brain changes associated with bipolar disorder. And so what is lithium used for? Well, it's actually FDA approved in the treatment for acute mania and mixed episodes in bipolar one disorder ages seven and older. It's also used as maintenance treatment or maintenance therapy for bipolar one disorder. Those are the FDA uses. Now, off-label uses are for treatment-resistant depression when it's used adjunctively or together with an antidepressant, also for cluster headaches, or even for bipolar 2 maintenance of depression or bipolar 1 maintenance of depression. Now, its adjunct effects for depression have also been shown with cases of nutritional lithium, and we'll talk specifically about nutritional lithium in a separate video, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that video. But today, we're just focusing on lithium carbonate. So, how long does it take to work? Well, the onset of action actually begins anywhere from one to three weeks. And for adults, dosage ranges are typically between 900 to 1200 milligrams a day in divided doses. And for children ages seven to say 18, the dosing is weight-based and adjusted according to serum levels. And we'll talk about serum monitoring as also the dosages with adults is also dependent on serum levels. So you don't reach toxicity with lithium. And we'll speak about that specifically in another section. So is lithium addicting? Well, there is no addiction potential with lithium. It's not addictive because it does not cause cravings or compulsive use or compulsive behaviors associated with cravings for the medication. However, stopping lithium abruptly can actually lead to rebound symptoms. And this includes heightened anxiety, irritability, agitation, tremors, or sudden return or worsening of the mood episodes such as mania or depression, which may be more severe than the original symptoms. So to prevent this, lithium discontinuation should always be done gradually under the guidance of a healthcare provider. And so what are the side effects of lithium? Well, let me start by saying there are many, many side effects of lithium, but I'm going to touch on the most common ones and then the ones that are considered most dangerous or warnings to be aware of. But if you want to know all of the side effects, then go ahead and look at the link in the description for the FDA label at Daily Meds. So the common side effects are hand tremors, excessive thirst, frequent urination, nausea, 
general discomfort, and fatigue. Less common symptoms that can be reported are thyroid dysfunction, mild cognitive dulling, and even weight changes. Rare but serious side effects, lithium toxicity, which is a boxed warning of lithium, chronic kidney disease, cardiac arrhythmias, and increased intracranial pressure. And so some warnings and precautions with lithium are renal impairment. So lithium can actually accumulate to toxic levels in patients with kidney dysfunction. And so regular kidney function tests are recommended and lithium would not be a medication used in someone with chronic kidney disorder. Thyroid disorders can also occur because lithium may actually be a factor or cause in hypothyroidism when taken long-term. And therefore it's also important to monitor thyroid function. So before even starting lithium, you want to make sure that you get your baseline CMP or complete metabolic panel, because that's going to look at both kidney and liver function. And then you also want to make sure that you're getting a full thyroid panel to include things like TSH, free T3, free T4, and total T4. Another warning is cardiac concerns. And this must be used with caution in patients with cardiovascular diseases as lithium can affect heart rhythms and that can be one of the side effects of lithium. Another warning is with pregnancy and breastfeeding. Lithium use during pregnancy may actually cause harm to the fetus. It's categorized as being teratogenic, um, particularly in the first trimester. And so it's also excreted in breast milk and may affect the infant and therefore not advised for use during pregnancy or for breastfeeding. You may have to, if you're pregnant, switch to a different mood stabilizer. Dehydration and sodium levels are also things to consider. Dehydration or low sodium can actually increase lithium levels, which make the toxicity risk much higher. And so that's why it's important to stay hydrated and maintain consistent salt intake. So if you change your diet and go to like low salt diet, that can actually affect your lithium levels. So if you are going to make dietary changes, make sure you let your provider know so that they can help you with adjusting your dose and monitoring your serum levels. And so let's talk about serum concentration and lithium toxicity. So for adults 18 to 65 years old, the therapeutic dosage range is going to be 0.6 to 0.8. Um, and then there can be adjustments made, lower ranges, um, for those who have a good response but poor tolerance, like your elderly patients, 0.4 to 0.6 may actually be therapeutic for them. Um, and then higher ranges of 0.8 to 1.0 for insufficient response, but good tolerance. So really when it comes to this therapeutic window, you really want to base it on your patient's symptoms or what your symptoms are, because it is such a narrow window, which we're going to talk about next, which is toxicity. So there is a variation with dosage range from anywhere from 0.6 to say one, um, as far as what is therapeutic, but it's really what is therapeutic for you because some patients can find therapeutic benefit with ranges that are below 0.6. So let's talk about toxicity. Levels above 1.2 can actually cause toxicity um, and severe toxicity is above 2.0. So you have the therapeutic window 0.6 to one, and then you have this toxicity, you know, 1.2 to two, and then anything greater than two being severe. So that's where we really have to make sure we're watching these numbers and levels. So when we're looking at the symptoms, mild toxicity would be like 1.2 to 1.5. And so you may experience nausea, some vomiting, or some slight hand tremors. Moderate would be 1.5 to 2.0 which could lead to confusion, muscle twitching, and dizziness. And then severe toxicity above two is actually going to lead to seizures, coma, cardiac arrhythmias, and unfortunately death could also occur. Factors contributing to toxicity, as I mentioned earlier, dehydration is a huge factor because this can increase lithium concentrations and also um, salt content. So make sure that you're, again, discussing that with your provider. Renal impairment, so those with kidney failure, um, reduces lithium clearance, so they're at risk for toxicity. And again, should not be really taking lithium if you're in chronic renal failure. 
And then there's also some drug interactions as there are certain medications that can actually raise lithium levels, which can increase the risk of toxicity. And we'll talk about some of those drug interactions in a moment. But first let's talk about the blood monitoring. So regular blood level checks are crucial because we wanna prevent toxicity. So when you do get your blood levels checked, it's typically 12 hours after your last dose. Now initial monitoring when you start lithium could be every one to two weeks of looking at that serum concentration to make sure that you're not going above that toxic range and that your symptoms are being managed well. So close monitoring is key in the initiation phase. Then every two to three months after you find a dose that meets stability for your moods and is within a therapeutic range, you wanna check every two to three months for the next six months. And then after that, every six months to a year, as long as you're stable. Now, you would also check levels when there's dosage changes, uh, symptom changes, or even chronic illness or any illnesses that could cause a potential risk for the lithium levels to become increased. And of course, the early signs of lithium toxicity require immediate attention and immediate action. So if you start to have any of those early signs of toxicity like nausea, vomiting, tremors, definitely let your provider know and they'll probably send you to get your lithium levels checked because obviously we wanna prevent severe toxicity or severe toxic state. And so now let's talk about drug interactions. Well, lithium is not metabolized by the liver and so it doesn't go through those cyp450 enzymes that we typically talk about in this section on my other videos instead it's actually excreted unchanged by the kidneys um, so renal function or kidney function does play a crucial role in its clearance um, so making kidney health an essential factor in its use however there are some medications that affect its metabolism that is not related to the CYP450 enzyme system or metabolism system. So medications that can increase lithium levels are NSAIDs or your non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like aspirin, diuretics, ACE inhibitors, which are types of blood pressure medications, and serotonin enhancing drugs like SSRIs or SNRIs. So those of you who are using lithium as an adjunct to your antidepressant treatment are gonna make sure that you're monitoring those lithium levels, but most likely you're gonna be taking a very low dose of lithium that may not even be detectable in serum concentrations. And then medications that decrease serum levels of lithium include acetylzolamide, sodium bicarbonate, and theophylline. You then want to avoid the use of alcohol because alcohol can increase the toxic effects of lithium and make lithium ineffective and also increase the risk of alcohol poisoning when it's combined with lithium, so no alcohol. You also wanna avoid the use of serotonergic agents, so besides your SSRIs or SNRIs, um, you wanna avoid other things that can increase serotonin, which I talk about in my video on serotonin syndrome, so make sure to watch that if you haven't already. As I mentioned before, that lithium is contraindicated in severe renal impairment, so those with a creatinine clearance of less than 30 would not be advised to take lithium. And so what are my final thoughts on lithium? Well, lithium is a cornerstone psychiatric treatment for bipolar disorder, particularly bipolar one disorder. And as I mentioned earlier, it's considered the gold standard treatment for bipolar disorder because it's very effective and its efficacy is unparalleled but it does require careful monitoring to balance its benefits with potential risk. And patients should also make sure that they're engaging with open communication with your healthcare provider to ensure it's safe and effective use. So there you have it. That is my overview on lithium carbonate. Stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I'm gonna be talking about nutritional lithium or lithium orate in another video. But do any of you have experience with taking lithium carbonate for your bipolar disorder and wanna share it with us? Go ahead and drop it down in the comment section below because we learn from sharing each other's experiences. And as always, I thank you all for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey and I'll look forward to seeing you all next time.